Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome home. Fallout 4 Script Extender finally got its update, so it's time for me to show you how easy it is to mod Fallout 4. We're going to be doing this live just so I can prove to you how easy this really is. The first thing you're going to want to do is have Fallout 4 fresh install. Hit play at least one time so it can download anything required, and you get this pop-up. Once you're here, you can adjust any video settings as you see fit. Hit OK exit out once that's done we're going to hop over to the internet fallout for a script extender go to files manual download everything that's needed for this video will be linked in the description while this downloading we're going to go back into steam you're going to go to your library fallout 4 right click manage browse local files it's going to take you to the base directory of your fallout 4 install we're going to throw this on the right side of the screen and then we're going to open up another file explorer throw this on the left side of the screen and navigate to your install of Fallout 4 script extender. Once you're at your download location, you're gonna right click, 7-zip, and extract here. Once extracted, go inside the F4SE file. These two bottom ones read me on what's new. You can just delete if you want to or ignore them. You don't have to delete that. You're gonna grab these other remaining three files, two folders, and copy them into the Fallout 4 base directory. Once that's done, you can close out both of the tabs. Now we're going to launch Vortex. Once you're inside of Vortex and everything's up to date, you're going to navigate to games. My install has already recognized Fallout 4, so we're going to activate it. If your Fallout 4 install is not located here, just go to search for game, type in Fallout, and we'll say manage. You click on whichever one you're wanting to currently manage. So with me, I'm going to go to activate. There's a couple things that you'll most likely have to take care of before we can start modding anything. Loose files may not get loaded, simply hit fix and that'll take care of itself. Then we're going to navigate to the dashboard. You want to ensure that Fallout 4 Script Extender has a star next to it. If you do not see the star next to Fallout 4 Script Extender, all you have to do is click these three dots. Set as primary. What you're doing is telling Vortex whenever I launch Fallout 4, I want you to run it through the Fallout 4 Script Extender. If you do not set that as primary, it will try to launch through its base launcher and the mods won't work. Or at least most mods won't work. Next, we're going to navigate into our settings. We're going to go to mods. And you're going to hit suggest right here next to mod staging folder. If this changes, hit apply. And then you're also going to make sure the deployment method is set to hard link deployment and hit apply if necessary. Now that we have all the prep work done, we're going to ensure that's actually working by just launching the game. Once you make it into the main menu of Fallout 4, hit the tilde key on your keyboard, type git f4se version, no spaces, and hit enter. You should see f4se version 0.7.2 if you're doing this soon after recording. You hit tilde again to close out of that and then quit to the desktop. Back on Nexus, we've navigated to the most endorsed mods of all time. One of the most important mods is gonna be mod configuration menu. So you click on the mod that you want, you scroll down, always check requirements. Some mods that you're gonna be interested in are gonna require a mod that requires a mod that requires a mod. The mod configuration menu only requires Fallout 4 script extender. So it's very simple. All we're gonna do is click on files, mod manager download, and Vortex is going to handle the rest of this for us because we already have Fallout 4 Script Extender installed. But if we navigate to something like Start Me Up Redux, go down to the requirements, you see that this needs all of the DLC for the base game. And you also need the unofficial Fallout 4 patch. So we're going to click the link to that, scroll down again, make sure that we have all the requirements. This, we just need the DLC, so we're good. We're going to go to Files, Mod Manager Download. Hit download. Once that download is completed, we can then head back again to the Start Me Up page. We have all the requirements necessary. We're going to go with the normal dialog because we don't have full dialog interface yet. Mod Manager download, download. Now if we hop inside Vortex, you can see that we have three mods installed and enabled. Ensure that you have deployed the mods. We're going to test this out. Alright, we've got our character set up. Once we turn around and hit that doorway, we should get a pop-up. Boom, mods working. We're good to go. No need for further testing, so we're just going to Alt F4 out. And really, you're good to go. If you would like, I have a collection on the Nexus. In this current loadout, there's about 155 mods, totaling just under 20 gigabytes total storage space. If you have any further questions, let me know. Hop in the Discord. Link for that will be in the description. I'll help you guys out however I can. Another really useful bit of information, if you head into your settings on Vortex, go to Interface, 
and enable profile management. You can then go to profiles. This is your default profile. This is where you've been storing all your mods currently. You're going to hit this drop down and you're going to hit clone. Let's say that you have that base modding list where you have the game exactly how you want it. Let's just call this base list. Hit OK. And this is like a restore point. So if we continue messing around at default, adding a bunch of extra mods, testing them out, something ends up breaking, you can fall back to this base list by just enabling whichever one you want to use currently. And of course, you can take this as far as you want to. If you want to have a whole profile that's dedicated to Frost and then a different profile that's dedicated to more settlement building aspects, another profile that's like more modern, realistic, zombie apocalypse, whatever you want to do, you can have individual profiles for each. And check my other uh, mod tutorials. I've covered Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas. Uh, we do console modding. I, I got a lot of different tutorials coming out. Uh, Xenia for the xbox 360 emulator on pc that'll be the next video i'll work on but that's it for me i'm rod tactics this is how to mod fallout 4 i'm gonna catch y'all later